Thanks. Uh, I'm Björn Jeffrey. I'm an uh, internet uh, strategist. Uh, lately, I've been super interested in how technology affects other things than just the internet and the media companies that I, I tend to be working with. So I've been looking at how it changes societies and, and the intersections thereof. And uh, like Henrik said, last time I, I, I tried to talk about this type of thing, uh, I got called bad names uh, <laughs> because people thought this was an awful way of looking at the future. And I'm not saying that maybe this is the perfect way of looking at it, I'm just saying that this is a way of looking at it. Uh, and I've chosen just the, the question really of who, to pose the question, uh, who needs a country? And what do we actually need the, the countries for? And uh, I'm thinking about it for quite a long time and it's just a thought, uh, I'm half English, uh, I'm a quarter Norwegian, uh, I'm a quarter Swede. Uh, this is, uh, tends to be a good thing going up in school because I can speak you know, two languages fluently, so that's fairly handy. It's, it's considerably more difficult in, in, in like sports, football, European, like who am I going to root for, that type of thing. Uh, even there, you know, in this tiny little area, uh, you, you find fairly quickly that it's, it's not entirely obvious what country I, I should be belonging to and who I really am. And what I thought from that was that Actually, my identity goes, goes way beyond my nation, and actually per perhaps my nationality has, has very little to do with, with who I really am. And I found this picture which I thought was very, which described it quite well. Uh, these three, three people here on the same side are, are obviously going to the same place. They, they share a lot of things, they probably share their destination, but I'd say that they probably don't share their identity too much even if they actually come from the same place. Uh, they, they, they've found other realms of sort of connecting to their, uh, their identity to go together with others. Um, I think this is gonna happen a lot, lot more. And the reason for that is that the way I look at the internet, I see it as, as a carrier of media and I see it as a layer. It's almost like a horizontal layer that lays straight over all nations, all over the world. And what it does, it enables and it also enhances possible for more verticals to come down. Uh, it enhances and it makes it possible for people to identify themselves with other people that maybe they had never found. In small, small sub-niches, small little um, ideas, just a thought that they found, they can find someone else on the other side of the world that thinks the same way. And you can start creating your identity from there. Also, it enables people that were never previously connected to maybe step out of a realm that they don't feel that they belong to. It could be their local surroundings, it could be their country, anything. It gives them the possibility to step out from there and, and start finding something else. Um, so what this leads me to think is that I think that when we begin looking at the way we live and the way we will be living, I think connectivity is going to be so much more important than proximity. I think uh, proximity is, is a factor, of course. It's going to be how near we are things. But it's going to be so much more important to be in places that we're well connected. And I'm thinking partly uh, infrastructurally, uh, being near, being able to uh, be connected through uh, an, an, a large flight hub, for instance, but also, of course, technologically connected through, through good internet connections of some sort. And I think the way when we look for the future places to live, maybe proximity will just be a very small factor to play in this. Um, what this would mean for, for choosing places to live and places to stay is that uh, we'll be looking at places like this, for instance. Mm, this is the, an open street map view over five countries. And um, this is, uh, of course, uh, France and there's Germany and there's a small part of Luxembourg, there's Brussels and it's the Netherlands up top. This area is, is very, very connected in many ways. It's near, near Paris, it's near Frankfurt, Cologne, Amsterdam. You can literally fly nonstop all over the world just by living in this small area. It's not necessarily that interesting what country you actually live in. You just happen to live in this area and you're severely well connected and you can find and go to all of your family and all your friends. Uh, but if you happen to live in France or if you live in Belgium, that's not maybe the most interesting factor. You're just well connected and you can find somewhere else. So I, I pose that it's the separation of, of inhabitants from living. That maybe we're going to be inhabitants in one specific country because we need a passport. But maybe we don't need that more from a country, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we just have to be inhabitants in one place and then we start defining how we live and the way we live and, the w and where we're living on um, completely different factors. And that's the thought I'm going to leave you with today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.